Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, peace, and Easter joy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the one who is the good shepherd of the sheep. Amen. Our focus for this morning, once again, is on this idea of speaking of hope, not just seeing hope, as we're always encouraged to do. Not only seeing places of hope in our lives, but also seeing places where it is lacking and speaking good news into that. We have to know the hope of Jesus before we can speak hope into the lives of others. And so as we take a look at these I am statements where God tells us very clearly who he is, we look this morning at this statement, I am the good shepherd that, that Jesus says in John 10. You've heard this a couple times already this morning, but I'll say it again. Verses 14 through 15, I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. I know my own sheep and they know me as the Father knows me and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. As we consider, I am the good shepherd. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Holy Spirit, be in my lips and in the ears and hearts of everyone present, that we may all hear a good word from you. Amen. There's something special about being called by your name. Let me say that again. There's something special that happens when you are called by name. When you, someone calls you by name, what happens? You perk up. Oh, it's me you're talking to, right? Now, the tone that someone says that word, those, or your name, says all, uh, tells us a whole lot about what the intent of that address is about. If it's in a kind tone, then you know that, that someone's just reaching out to you. But if it has a little bit of frustration behind it, you get a different sense. And if the middle name is added, oh, you better watch out. Maybe you're in trouble. It's interesting how being called by name, how, how we respond to that. And as we think about Jesus being the good shepherd and calling us by name, I wonder sometimes how people in the world think about how Jesus, how God calls out to them, whether it is the, the stern, stiff Aaron Michael that I heard when I was growing up, or if it is the, the tender invitation to do life. Come here, be a part of what I'm doing, because we're going to do something fun, we're going to do something meaningful. I, it's, it's clear to me that in situations where a person's eyesight has started to go, and their ears are still clear that being able to hear someone call them by name brings about an awareness of who that person is and who they are. And so as we think of ourselves being sheep and Jesus being the good shepherd, it's good to know that he perpetually calls out to us, even when we can't see him or see the way forward, and calls us his own. We have plenty of evidence throughout God's word of this people being called by name. In fact, remember little Samuel? Samuel, Samuel, what does he say? Eli, I'm here. He doesn't know who's talking to him. When he figures out it's God, what is his response? Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And I think what God intends for all of us is to hear the voice of our good shepherd and see there a welcome and an invitation to do life and to find the protection in the life that we have all always wanted in the arms of our good shepherd. There's a big identity piece in this, being called by name. We very clo closely associate our identity with our name. And so what are the identifying markers of who we are? It's not just about our name and how we speak, but it's also about our space. And so as we've been taking a look at these beautiful stained glass windows that adorn our space here at Emmanuel, it's given us the opportunity to take a look at these I am statements that are depicted in the pieces of stained glass. For the past couple weeks, we've talked about how Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the root and the offspring of David. I'm the bright and morning star. And to this morning, quite appropriately on Good Shepherd Sunday, we hear him say, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. These symbols speak 
words to us, and the images deepen our understanding of who God says he is. If you look carefully at this, this picture, you'll notice that the, the sheep is kind of caught in some brambles. Not a place where any sheep wants to be. Now, I don't have wool on me, but I can imagine that would be pretty uncomfortable, and it would be restricting. In fact, it could be deadly. And so the good shepherd goes out with his shepherd's crook and finds a way to lead the sheep out of danger. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. What does he say after that? He says, I know my own. I know them. And my own know me. There's an understanding and a recognition there of who we are. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And Jesus and the Father know each other perfectly. Do we know the good shepherd perfectly? Well, if we have any reason to doubt that, how do we know who Jesus is? This next statement says it all. I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, I'm not sure about you, but that's a humongous statement that I have labored my entire life to try to understand. Why the good shepherd would be willing to lay down his life for the likes of me. And yet, there it is. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own. They, they know me. And I lay down my life for the sheep. This is the essence of the good shepherd. Someone who is willing to do anything to preserve the life of you and me. And so it's not only depicted in this piece of glass, but there's also another one. Now, I'm not sure if you would associate this one naturally with sheep, but the caption underneath it, I'm not sure if you can see it, is, I am the door of the sheep. And if we're, when we're thinking about a door, this is a good depiction of a door, but more of one you would find in a grand mansion or maybe one of the cathedrals of Europe. But it's not the kind of door that we would envision in this passage. It's from the same section, from John 10, which I would encourage you to read this week. Earlier in the passage, Jesus says, I am the door of the sheep. And what you may not know, maybe you've heard this before, is that shepherds in Jesus' time would often use their own bodies as the door of the sheep pen. So that the, the, the shepherd would be the first line of defense against a wolf or any predator that would try to eat the sheep. The essence of the, the shepherd lying down in the gap of the sheep pen says this, you have to go through me, evil, and anything out that would, there that would try to take my sheep from me, you have to go through me to get to them. And I'm not sure about you, but to me that sounds remarkably like a shepherd laying down his life for his sheep. Someone who stands in the gap for you and me. Who says that death and hell and all the evil in the world could try to stand against you and me, and he stands up against it and conquers it. That is what a good shepherd does. He's the door. He doesn't let anything evil come in after us. When we are secure in his, his fold, in his family, he defends and fights for us to the death. And so that one day, there is absolutely no evil in this world or the next that can touch us. Do you get what great news that is? Do you know that for yourself, that you belong to God's family, that you're a part of his flock? It's so potently and patently good that to try to suggest otherwise is ludicrous. We have a good shepherd. He fights for us. He gives us safety and protection. But you probably know there are plenty of people who live their entire lives not knowing that comfort and that shelter of a good shepherd. And still today, there's plenty of evidence that that's in the world. So what does this world need? It needs people who knows who God is and know who they are so they can in turn recognize the lack of hope in the lives of people around them and speak hope into it. Now, thankfully, we have a God who tells us who he is. In this passage, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. What does this mean? We'll use Luther's term since we're in the season of confirmation. Basistas, what does this mean? Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. This means something about you and me. It means that we are a sheep in his care. Now, what do sheep do? They're pretty silly animals. They often go astray. They often get themselves in a scrape or in brambles. 
And yet our good shepherd always will seek us out and find us. And the good shepherd, Jesus being the good shepherd also means that he knows you by name and he calls you by name and he invites you to do life with him, be in relationship with him. I think it's clear as we look through the, the world and the, the relationships and the people we have in our lives that not everybody knows those things or holds on to those things. And I think that many people, when they have the idea of being called by name by God, might respond more with the, the fear that comes from the first name and middle name combo said with a little bit of zip. I think that may be the response for many people. And yet, you, you and I know that God tenderly calls us by our name and wants us to be a part of the life that he has planned for us. So how do we express these things? I think we have to recognize where that lack of hope is. I'm sure that, that you know people who feel unknown or unseen. People who feel lost or who have felt like they've strayed. Maybe they felt like they've strayed too far that they could never come back from that, whatever that is. And so in those moments, we have a God who knows us and sees us, all of us, for the best and the worst of what we are, and loves us nonetheless. We also have been lost. We also have turned astray, and God offers forgiveness and a way back. I think there's plenty of people, it's very clear to me that there are people who face evil every day in many ways, shapes, and forms. It's one of the reasons why there is such upheaval in our, our world and in our country right now. Evil is out there, there's no doubt about it, and it affects all of us to varying degrees. And so when we see people who have come into contact with that evil and feel unprotected from it, how can we speak hope into that? We can say, I know someone who is able to take that evil and confront it and beat it. We may not see the effects of that right here, right now, but God has promised us eternal protection so that while this world may be able to hurt us, the next will not. Now, those are big, grand things to be able to say. I'm not sure if you can envision yourself saying those on a day-to-day -day basis to the people you come into contact with all the time. And it's a daunting task to say such big things. But my friends, our world is going through big problems, and people, people that we care about are being hurt in big ways. What more beautiful thing can we say than to point them to the hope that we have in Christ. So they start to see a little glimmer of that hope that we know and hold and profess. You want to hear some good news? This isn't something that we have to do alone. And it's, it's not something we have to manufacture. It's something that God promises for us. Look at the verse right beyond this. I love this verse. But I have other sheep that are not from this sheep pen. Jesus identifies it. There's going to be people out there who need this hope of this protection. I must bring them also. And they might listen to my voice. They will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock, one shepherd. My friends, Jesus sends us out in the power of his spirit with his promise as, our, as the, the wind in our sails. The promise that says there will be one flock, one shepherd, and his sheep will listen to his voice. So speak boldly of the hope you have in your good shepherd to care for you, to protect you in this world and the next. Christ is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please pray with me. Father God, we thank and praise you for sending your son, the good shepherd, to bind up the wounds of the broken, to preach good news and forgiveness of all brokenness and straying to sheep that love to go away from you. Father, we know that we have been those strayed sheep as well, and you have provided abundant forgiveness and life for us through the power of your cross. We pray that you would give us eyes to see those in our midst, in our lives, in our daily lives, who are lacking in this hope, of your resurrection power and the forgiveness that you won for us. 
and that you would fill our lips with the kind of good news that they need to hear. Words of hope, words of encouragement, words that point them to the one who wants to be their good shepherd as well. We ask it all in his name, in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes far beyond what our heads can understand, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Amen.